Composition 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 Hey everyone, uh, today we're going to work on some composition studies and it will definitely utilize what we've already studied which is gesture drawing. Um, remember with gesture drawing is a way of drawing that's definitely looser, more intuitive, especially if you compare it to say um, continuous line drawing. And we learn gesture drawing as a way of sort of just getting the essence of the forms on the page so that you can later apply the siding techniques like siding for uh, alignments and measuring and angles. We're not going to get as detailed with composition as we would if this was a 2D design class, but I do want to cover some basics of composition that will help you um, with your drawings and especially just the process of discovering your own composition because I feel that if you are drawing something and you like how things are looking on the page, meaning you like what the, the arrangement of the different forms, the different elements on the page are, are looking, you will be more invested in the drawing and you'll end up liking the drawing more. So what we're gonna do is I set up just three simple forms, three or four, and I am going to draw in my sketchbook and you can draw along if you want to or set up your own few objects and just roughly what I would expect the shape and the scale of my drawing paper in class like your newsprint paper and I'm just going to intuitively again with the, with the gesture start gesturing these forms and I'm not worried about being totally accurate. Let me try another one. So let me maybe a little bit smaller here. Let's try this. You can see I'm not, I'm mostly looking at the still life. And maybe I'll do another one. And you can move the still life around too. I'm just kind of keeping it in place for now. Actually, I think maybe I'll come here. Okay, so I have three different options so far, and I could decide, okay, what do I like? Um, so the middle one, I definitely don't like this one because this is, there's too much blank space and unused space. So unless I had some other elements, maybe there are some things up here that I might include, or there are some objects in the background that were taller than these, then I might um, I might uh, use that, but I'm not really liking that composition. This one's better. The first one I did uh, definitely fills the page better. I like the cropping, um, and I think that works pretty well. Um, this one I th I find it a little bit more exciting to me just because. Yes, there is some blank space, but this is a very, um, like this, this space is just sort of just blank. Like it just, it doesn't really have any character to the shape. This has a lot more interesting contours to this overall shape in the background. Uh, and I like the extended, uh, foreshortening of this form here and thinking ahead if, if I was thinking about when I start shading which we're not yet but um, might as well start thinking about it when we start shading in a couple weeks 
since this is such a dark object, I like how bold that would be towards the center versus over here, it would be over there and there wouldn't really be anything to balance it. It's like there's a lot of lighter forms here. So if I'm thinking ahead, what would be a good composition even with a shaded drawing? This is my favorite of the three. So thinking th of things like balance, uh, repetition is a good thing to think about when you're composing. And just thinking about how the objects relate to the edges of the page. Cropping can be a good, uh, useful thing in a composition. So really, there's not a hard set rule. Like there are the, you know, the rule of thirds. I'm sure you've heard of that, where if you divide the uh, composition to, to, into thirds, both vertically and horizontally, and where there those intersections, you put elements there. Um, you know, that's useful certainly in photography and also drawing. But really what I want you to do with this exercise is to do more than just three, maybe even more, maybe multiple, um, turning this still life or rearranging the objects and doing multiple of these and really discovering for yourself what you think is a good composition. And another thing that helps is looking at other artwork, looking at other artists' compositions to get ideas because really from that, that is how you, you get ideas to uh, arrange your own objects. So what we're gonna do in class is we're gonna do some of these in class and you're going to actually work on arranging the objects yourself rather than having the still life objects already set up for you and thinking about these ideas, thinking about some of the um, artworks that you saw in this presentation and really again just discovering for yourself what you think would be a good arrangement, a good composition for your drawings.